Amen. Amen. Brother Moses, let's put our hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
the impression that we get when we sing that song is God who is out there somewhere and we are saying He is. But I received this revelation that that God we are talking about, He is not out there. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Is He in your heart? He is in your heart. He is in my heart. And therefore as I sing that song that He is able, I'm not singing about a God who is out there. I'm singing about a God who is in me. That is why the Bible says that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So when we are singing the song, we will sing, are you up or not? Praise the Lord. Yeah. If we are talking about Nimshin, what has he conquered? He has conquered something. He has conquered nothing in me. Praise the Lord. So I refuse to have a war before me. I refuse to have a barrier before me because he has won and he is in me and so together I in him and him in me we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So let us sing that song thoroughly, you know, thoroughly, properly, you know, sing it thoroughly. If there's English like that, sing that song thoroughly in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. 
one in you. In the year that Tatan came to Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it, at the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from your loins and put off thy shoe from thy foot. Go loose the sackcloth from off thy loins and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, like my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder upon Egypt and Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. We we'll talk briefly about the naked prophet. The naked prophet. God speaks to Isaiah and tells Isaiah, lose your sackcloth. Remove your garment, your outer garment. Remove your shoes and walk. He didn't tell him how long. It was after three years that God again spoke. God didn't tell Isaiah what this shirt removing business was about. He just told him, remove your shirt, remove your shoes, and walk. And Isaiah walked naked for three years. And God spoke and said, It is for this reason that I sent my servant Isaiah naked for three years. As a witness and a testimony. When God calls his people, there is a dimension he says, you will have to walk naked. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. There is a place you will have to walk naked. Now there is something I need to fight with that is called our brain. Because our brain is never really in agreement with the word of God. That's why in Romans chapter 12 he says that be ye transformed through the renewing of your mind. So, so your mind has to, your mind is an enemy to God. It has to be renewed continuously. So what we are doing today, we are fighting with your brain. I'm fighting with my brain. Because sometimes the things of the spirit cannot agree with the things of the mind. How do you look at a poor person and you tell them, listen, say you are rich. It doesn't make sense. How do you look at a sick person and tell them, they say you are healed. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make this mental sense. That's what I'm talking about. And so you have to fight with that mental sense. So the spiritual sense can come in. And when spiritual sense comes in, then you begin to walk as you've been called to walk. And he said, naked. And for your information, he is not the only one who has ever prophesied naked. He's not the only one. At least that one was written expressly. But how many of you know that Jacob, he had a nice, very nice coat. Very, very nice coat. Then one day, his father sent him to take food to his brothers. And his brothers saw him afar off. And they said, here comes a dreamer. We will slay him and we will throw him in the pit. Now the slaying bit, I don't know what happened. They were convinced by Ruben not to slay him. But they forgot to do exactly as they intended. What they did first was to take his coat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What they did first was to take his coat. 
So the poor boy was thrown in the pit, cutless. The poor boy was thrown in the pit, naked. Now that's exactly where God wanted him, naked. He wanted the boy, naked. he didn't want the boy with the, with the jacket that has been made by somebody. He wanted the boy with a jacket, a supernatural jacket. When he was being sold to the Assyrians, he was sold jacketless, <laughs> if I may use that word. But how many of you know that in Potiphar's house, when he started to run, Potiphar's wife caught his jacket? Meaning somewhere along the way he found another jacket and put it on. <laughs> if he did have another jacket, maybe, I don't know, the Potiphar's business would not have been there. But he went in there, he took another jacket, he put it on. So when trouble started, he had to leave the jacket behind. Are we together? Joseph of Arimathea, I'll jump into the New Testament. After Christ was crucified, somebody say he was crucified naked. Say that. Jesus was crucified naked. Joseph of Arimathea, a respectable man, he went to Pilate and he said, I want the body of Jesus. And he took the body and he wrapped it with linen. And he took it to a grave in the dark. And put it there and locked. Amen. Amen. On the third day, when they came to the grave, they found something in the grave. They found the linen garment in the grave. But Christ was not in the grave. Mume nifungia kwa hii room, nilikuwa na shati ya sky blue. Nikakuja, unapata shati wapi? Na nimeenda. But on the road to Emmaus, when he walked with the disciples and listened to them, and talked to them and revealed himself to them. He was not naked, the one you know. Yes, Lord. And he took a whole happy. He and he fung on a Joseph. A very bad year. Now he watched a kaburi. He in Guinea and Ivar and he took a happy. Because he was not naked. When he walked into the into the closed room, he walked through the door, and he said, "I am he." And Thomas was like. I am not sure until I touch. It is good to have such people who don't believe in you. Hmm. Would, uh, is there anything good that can come from wherever you come from? You know, people who will just see everything like uh, you have to convince me thoroughly that you are the one. And Jesus said, Put your hand. The thing is, he was not naked in that room. He was not naked. And so when God is calling us to walk with him, if we will succeed, we will have to walk with him naked and not ashamed. Praise the Lord. We have to walk naked and not ashamed. There's a gentleman called Abraham. We all know the story of Abraham. Abraham has been waiting for a son for years. And God shows up. And he tells him the one to receive the inheritance is from your loins. And Abraham waits. And the promise comes. When the promise comes, the promise turns into something else. And in my heart, I believe, Abraham started to look at the blessing that God had given him as a garment that he would go showing around Say you thought uh, sit apart of God, thought I couldn't get you, you thought here is my blessing. You know, I am blessed. You know what I mean? It was not a testimony as that, it was like a garment he was wearing. And God looked at him and he said, You know what? I, I want you a son. That one. <laughs> that one. That coat you have been wearing. I need to naked. <laughs> and 
until you are naked, you can't be able to carry the blessing into the next dimension. Until you stop worrying what people will say about you, you are not ready to carry the blessing of God into the next dimension. And Abraham took three days walking. And after three days, the Bible says, he lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And he told his servants, listen, I and my son, we are going in yonder to worship. And we will return. Now he has started to remove. <laughs> now he has started to remove the jacket. That, that coat he was wearing, he said, we will go to sacrifice. And during that time, being an idol worshiper, an ex-idol worshiper, you slaughter something, it is gone, it is gone. But deep down he had faith. He had what? Faith. So you cannot effectively walk naked if you don't have faith. It is only a crazy person who can walk. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Only a naked person who will walk naked. And Abraham, the Bible says, he took fire in his hands. See, <laughs> it is not a matchbox. It was, it was not those lighters of, to think of a millennium, we'll just light and then we'll do the fire. He carried fire in his hands. Have you ever read that? Go read your Bible again. <laughs> he carried fire in his hands and they went up. When they went up to the mountain, the sacrifice agreed to be sacrificed. A boy of 17 years, you don't just tie a boy of 17 years. This was an old man. And so, and so it was a situation where they, are, they had come to the end of the end. This is where humanity ends. This is where my strength ends. I believe you will raise him from the dead. I believe you will raise him from the dead. I believe you will raise him from the dead. The Bible says, now faith is. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. Now faith is. If faith is now, then I will have to think the way I pray. Because faith is now. It is not tomorrow. It is now. He didn't say now faith will be. He said now faith is. Abraham was not believing that someday, someday, one day, one day. He believed. <laughs> when I decide from the mountain, I'm descending with my son. Because he had told the servants that I and my son will go and we will be back. Is somebody getting something? Yes. And so when you know that now faith is, you remove your jacket and say, God, here I am. The jacket is off. Because if I will prophesy to my situation, if I will prophesy to my circumstances, if I will prophesy to my neighbor, if I will be able to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover, I will not be able to do that. He has to fall off. The naked prophet. Praise the Lord. Are we together? The naked prophet. And so when you read, now faith is. The business of I am waiting on God to open a door is futuristic. The Bible says, now faith is. It is comfortable to say in the mind that I am waiting for a door. God will open a door one day for me. God will give me a breakthrough. But he said now, faith is. So which, meaning, which means that which you are saying is not faith. Because if it is faith, it is now. But now when you say it in the now, your mind says no. <laughs> you know, your mind Because how do you tell me that, that, that I am blessed. And yet the trouser I'm wearing, I've been wearing this same trouser for the last one week because I don't have any other trouser. How, what do you mean by I am blessed? It doesn't make sense. Yes, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 
So when I open my mouth to pray, I will remember, now faith is. So which language is a language of faith? Me and my son, we are going and we are coming back. Now that is a language of faith. He says, and Abraham believed, and it was credited to him, righteousness. Now, the covering I'm talking about is a covering that Christ wore when he rose from the dead. We all know he was not naked. But he had a covering that he had. A supernatural covering. It is the same covering that Adam had. Someone remembers Adam? And if they had that supernatural covering. But there's something happened in the garden. They ate the fruit. And their eyes opened. And they realized they were naked. naked. The mistake they did, they took fig leaves. And I can assure you, fig leaves are not like banana leaves. <laughs> no banana leaves, you just stitch a few and you are fine. <laughs> fig leaves, you will take time to stitch them together. <laughs> they took time. Instead of switching on into the supernatural and going back to the garment they had, the supernatural garment. They went for a natural garment. They went back to the natural garment. And God came looking. Adam, where are you? Because he needed to dress up with a supernatural garment. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, how do I get this garment on me? How do I walk in this faith that is a now faith? What do I do? Praise the Lord. Somebody say the blood. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, I think 12 or 13, it says, the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So for your faith to be faith, to be complete, the blood has to be present. Praise the Lord. Amen. For faith to be complete, the blood has to be present. Anybody remembering about Passover? Yes. God speaks to Moses. He tells Moses, listen, go tell the children of Israel to slaughter a lamb, each for a household. And if the household is too small, tell them to group up with another family. Slaughter that lamb, and then smear the blood on the lintels. Once you've done that, when the angel of death passes and he sees the blood, he will pass on. So that blood was a covering for them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now how do you walk or work the blood in your favor that it might start a faith within you? The instruction to Moses was that when you bring that lamb, it shall be spotless. Amen? Now, ikabuliwe, you know, what is who need to do what? To? Inspect, yes. That lamb had to be inspected. She like this time, I went to the most rich time. Turn that back. And stand there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, Sheila is a Jewish person for the purpose of illustration. Amen. Amen. And God spoke and he said, if she is to come, she is to wait, she is to bring <laughs> a spotless lamb. Alright? Yeah. That lamb, once slaughtered, it will be able to pacify the heart of God. And her sins will be forgiven. And so, she will bring the lamb. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now, as the lamb arrived at the priest, where the priest was offering the sacrifice, the priest did not go looking and inspecting Sheila, this Jewish person who has brought the lamb. Are you getting this? They did not inspect the bringer of the lamb. They inspected the lamb. The 
they did not inspect the bringer of the lamb. They inspected the lamb. So if the blood will bail you out, if the blood will work for you, if the blood of Jesus will bring favor for you and start a faith in you, you have to have an understanding that it is in the perfectness of the blood that will be given that blessing. It is not in your perfectness. It is in the perfectness of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that you will be given that supernatural garment. Amen. It is not with your part because of your perfectness. Amen. Because I can assure you, we have issues. Pastor knows. He has listened to a lot of us. <laughs> and seen some of us in the spirit. We have, we have things. Praise the Lord. So come and meet me. I can't do nothing. He says, our righteousness is as filthy rags. So you can never be good enough for God. I can never be good enough for God. And if I pray a prayer that will change somebody else's life, I have to be in a place where I know. The Lamb has been inspected. The Lamb is perfect. I walk in that place. If I will lay my hands on the sick and the sick recover, it is not because of what I was thinking yesterday. Because I can assure you, even when I was sleeping, you know, Babitu was in a pita pita. There was a day I had a privilege to walk in a fuel depot. Praise the Lord. A fuel depot does not hold three jerry cans of fuel. <laughs> a fuel depot holds millions and millions of, of, of liters of, of, of petrol. Mafutakali. Praise the Lord. Now, King, you can now listen. You can now so I walked in after watching everything at the gate. And while I finished my business inside and I was walking out, a crazy thought crossed my head. That's what I'm telling you. You, 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 you. The mind will always go. A crazy thought. Somebody say crazy thought. What if I flipped much? <laughs> Do you know what that would mean? Eternity pop. You are talking about it. What the figure my word? My own be a job. Crazy thought. That's what I'm telling you. Even when you are sleeping, crazy thought will tweet, tweet, tweet. So if a breakthrough will happen in your life, it is because of the perfectness of the land that has been offered. That is key to faith. To now faith is. Am I talking good? <laughs> Sometimes you have to borrow these, these words. Courage. <laughs> Perfectness of the Lamb. Now what you don't know or what you might know is that the blood of Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. That sacrifice of Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. In the dispensation up to the time Jesus was from the dead, that dispensation of the law and the dispensations before, it was about how powerful is the blood that you are brought. So who you are let a boost? Now who you are let a moment? Who you are going to move publico with? The kitchen to who is that is the one you publico with? That was that was a law in the spirit. And to those who are not born again, that law still exists. That is why which doctors will ask for a chicken. Next time they will not ask for a chicken. They'll ask for a goat. Next time they'll not ask for a goat. They'll ask for something bigger and bigger and bigger. And until ultimately they ask for a human sacrifice. But they can't go beyond human sacrifice. Jesus said, I am going to the cross. And I'll be that sacrifice. That man will not have to rely on bulls and goats for his sanctification. My blood will bring him into the presence of my father. Amen. When he rose from the dead, Mary Magdalene was there and, and he appeared and she thought he was a madman. And he said, 
Let me touch you. He said, no, you can't touch me. Because I have not yet ascended to the Father. I have not yet ascended to the Father. If she touched him, she would have interfered with the sanctity and the integrity of the process of what was going on. Amen. And so he said, you can't touch me. I have to go up first to the heavenly temple. How do I know there is a heavenly temple? Because Moses saw it. And it is written. He saw it. And he was told, go and build according to the pattern I showed you on the mountain. So he saw a pattern in the mountain. He came down and built the same similar pattern. And so Jesus said, I am going to the Father. And he went. And he went through the motions of taking the blood in. And the blood was accepted. Then he came down to walk to the mouse. Now that the blood has been accepted before the Father, <laughs> I am a blessed man. Amen. It is not what is in my fridge. I am blessed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is not what is in my fridge. I am, not I will. I am. Now faith is substance. So when I pray, because of the accepted blood of Jesus, my language is different. Everybody here, some few people here, my unspoken, and how they came from this place, and God has taken them to this place. My story is long, like a road. There was a time my mother would give me 20 bob for bus fare to go to school. <laughs> a place you would travel for almost about an hour and something, 20 shillings. And so we had to leave my village, go to the local town, pick another map, go to the other town. So she would give me fare for the other leg of the route. And she would tell me, go and tell the conductor for this route that I'll bring him money at the end of the month. <laughs> it was that bad. I'll bring him money when? At the end of the month. And I will go and I will tell the conductor, listen, mom said he will bring <laughs> She will bring money at the end of the month. And the guy would carry me. I let my child go down, to come out of me and leave 20 more. I go to school. And I got my child. And I said, baby girl, you will have the best. <laughs> you cannot school an ordinary school. At the time I am speaking that language, the money I am making, <laughs> I don't even know what to do with it because it is too little. But I made up my mind. What I went through, she can't go through. Baby girl, you are blessed. You will have everything you need. Everything. As long as I am here, even if I am not around, you will have everything you need. Praise the Lord. Faith is not complete until it speaks. What was that now? Believe in God. Believe in God. You have to say something. Abraham said, I am coming back with my son. Mm. And so I stand by the blood that has already been accepted in the heavens and speak a blessing over my little girl. Speak a blessing over people who look up to me. Speak a blessing over the work of my hands. Speak a blessing over my mom in the village. Speak a blessing because the blood has been accepted. And I have this confidence because the blood has been accepted. I am the son of God. Amen. Sons of God, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Faith is not complete without the name Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that he gave him a name that is above every name, both in this age and in the age to come. And a name is so important. A name is who you are. A name is life. When he said, Solomon, your son Solomon will build me a temple. He said, and I will put my name there. He didn't say, I will come and dwell there. 
He said, I will put my name there. <laughs> I will put my name there. Ni kama sasa tukwe jina yake, I will put my name there. Meaning that that name and him, they are one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so if I, if I will stand in the now faith, I have to stand by the blood. I have to stand in his name. Where are we going? We are looking for that jacket. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are throwing out this other jacket and we are looking for this other jacket so that we cannot begin to prophesy. You can't prophesy without a name. You will not break through without a name. It is that name that will take you to heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is that name that will open doors for you. It is that name that cripples will walk. It is that name that blind will see. It is in that name that things will happen in your life for you and for those who depend on you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he said, in my name, they will heal the sick. In my name, they will, you will cast out devils. In my name, in my name, in my name, in my name. And you know what? Religion has taught us that you have to say in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. How many of you have a checkbook? You have a checkbook? You have a checkbook? Amen. Sheila wrote me a check the other day for some work we doing. How many signatures were on the check? Three signatures. How many times, I assume that you're one of the signatories, how many times did you sign? So that check needed one signature from her. And I get the money. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. If you're the sole signatory of an account, you only need to issue one check with one signature. And that person will get the money. So it is not in the how many in the name of Jesus you say. One is enough to bail you out. Amen. The problem is, do you have faith that one is enough? Is your faith strong enough that one is enough? Jesus looked at the fig tree and said, mm, I'm hungry. Nobody will eat from you. And he walked away. He didn't stand there and say, and I rebuke you from the roots, and I rebuke you, and I did. And I, he said, nobody eats. And he left. Now that is faith. He spoke and he left. Praise the Lord. So if you speak in his name and walk away, believe you that you are coming down with your son. The supernatural becomes part of your life. Amen. Now the natural mind cannot catch that. You, you, you feel like you want to see it again and then see it again and then see it again and back out I feel the fire of God. You know, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> it is not in the fire of God. <laughs> it is in the name. It is under the blood. And by the fire of God, you are going to be set free. I have not read that scripture. <laughs> he just said, and God is a consuming fire. He didn't say, by the fire, you are going to be redeemed. It is by the blood that you will be redeemed. It is in the name that you have an inheritance, in the spirit and in the natural world. It is in that name that you have that garment. The vote naked. You look at me and you think I am not anything. But uh, I have a cover. I have a supernatural covering. There is no Satan anywhere who is going to, to, to do what? Praise the Lord. Amen. Bought a car and, and somebody said, Oh, you know, my skill, Papa, we can do it. We can change you. We can name my skill. And my skill is not here. My skill is not here. Who's here? My skill is not here. My skill is not here. You know what you agree to? Even God can help you. Oh, you know, I am not feeling well. You know, I'm, this is a moment I was again. Oh, you know, you know, I've been going through this. You know, I've been struggling. That is not the language of faith. That is not the language of faith. I'm told of a servant of God whose cousin was crazy. You know, Kicho Meruka. And he was in a mental hospital. 
And the servant of God drove. And he went there. And he said, put it in my car. I want to see which devil will follow into my car. <laughs> I want to see which devil. <laughs> I want to see which devil will follow. He didn't pray. He just said, put him in my car. I want to see which Satan will follow into my car. They carried the boy, put him in the car. The boy slept. <laughs> he slept. When he was waking up the other side of the trip, he was sober, sound mind. No, no, that is faith. That is the kind of faith I need. Here, you go there. You can come to town. You go there. Then, now you can go there. Sit down. You go there. Now, that kind of thing. That kind of thing. It is now faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen with the natural eyes, but you have seen them in the spirit. You have seen them in the spirit, and because you have seen them, Abraham saw himself coming down. That is why he was able to tell them, "I'm coming down." Amen. And so if I will speak, I will speak knowing that the sacrifice has been accepted. So we are not discussing. That one is done. What else do I need to? In the name. What does the name say? This is what the name says. That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are. So the name is a place. <laughs> are you getting? The name is a place. It is not just uh, Jehuna, I'm a George, I'm a Francis. That name of God is a place that you can run to. That's why the Bible says, the righteous run to it and they are safe. So when you say, in the name of Jesus, what follows next might, might not make sense. But when you say, in the name of Jesus, you actually run into a name and you are safe. Amen. When they look at you, Amen. Uh, I am not sure whether it is Amen. Because the way he spoke, that language is different. <laughs> I am not sure whether it is so and so. Because the way they spoke, it is different. May you be different because of the language you will speak. Amen. 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 We received a, an email from, from our pastor Samuel. I think a month and a half ago, and he said, public address system. Let me use that as an example. Public address system. Now, to some of us, it is, we will receive it one day. But you can choose to see it. You can choose to receive it. You can choose to leave it. Praise the Lord. Because we have seen it. Pastor, there's a speaker before. Those speakers are nice. <laughs> Those speakers are nice. And one is going to stand here. Because the speaker has come. Amen. One will stand here, and another one is going to stand here. And there's going and to be another one. Here. The monitor is going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> it is now. We are not waiting when we see speaker one, speaker two, or all of them together. We have received them. And we walk in that understanding. The money can, can... You know how many years? So when you talk the right language, the language of faith, those things are supposed to be having ears on your behalf and for you. They will hear what they need to hear. Praise the Lord. So now, faith is substance. The speakers are so nice. The keyboard is on. Yani kuna vita pa akili. Una skills of vita. Are you feeling that war? That that fight? You know keyboard. Sasa keyboard. Sasa keyboard. Ni yeye ama ningine ama itakuja. Eh? Imekuja. Praise the Lord. It is in that strength. The strong strength that our sister talked about. You know I had that statement for the first time. And I was like, wow. Strong strength. <laughs> it is that strong strength that when you possess it, you can look ahead and tell your children, tomorrow is bright. Tomorrow is bright. Tomorrow is bright. I am traveling to Israel and I'm going with you. 
the account is giving some 2,000 more. It is not about the account. It is, uh, I need to go and see that place where the Lord was laid. <laughs> so I am going now, I'm going, I'm going. Now faith is substance. Amen. Now there is a place of the mouth. Because faith is not complete without the mouth. I mentioned earlier and said that faith is speaking faith. If it is not speaking faith, it is not complete. And so what you say, once you have heard the word, once you have received the provisions of the blood, in his name, determines how far you go as a Christian. Determines how fast you go as a Christian. Determines how a blessing you will be to somebody as a Christian. If you don't say it, hata wakofu, Wezi kwa kwa kama mfunga mdomu. Hata wakofu, you are not going to get saved by shutting your mouth. You will get saved because you confessed and says, Jesus, you are the son of God. Jesus, you rose from the dead. Jesus, I receive you in my heart. Jesus, you have been speaking that which you have believed. David said, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. So you believe it and you speak it. The brain might be saying something different. But in your heart, you believe, I am not barren. I am not barren. So what I lay my hands on is going to prosper. Am I selling something? It, it, it is sold. You ni meuza. Na hii ni meuza. Na hii ni meuza. Na ni menumua hiyo ingine. Amen. Watch a customer was still. That silent in the spirit. They come running. By the way, could you be selling a uh, little <laughs> They had faith and they came. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, when you begin talking, talk like the child of God. When you begin talking, talk like God is in your heart. When you start talking, talk like you are a child of God. Are you praying for the sick? Don't pray for the sick to be healed tomorrow. Yeah. Are you praying for somebody who is struggling? Don't pray for them to stop struggling progressively. Like Sasa, you will move from, a, from walking to a bicycle and move from a bicycle, da 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 and then you graduate, and then you graduate, and then you graduate. Some of these things are religious. Some of these things are inspired of the devil. When you are buying a new car, when it's your first car, you have to buy a small car. Do you want to go gesha, go gesha? Do you want to go gesha? What are you talking? Do what? So, 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 so you are saying that I take my four hundred thousand, go buy an old car from somebody who has used it until it is tired, go knocking it around. And I tell you the truth, it's not going to go on. Because I'm not going to say that. 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 It's a blessing. I'm not going to say that. 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 I'm not going to <laughs> Amen. It doesn't happen. Praise the Lord. So it is the language you speak. First of all, you stand at a place. You've seen the blood. You've received that revelation of the blood. You know, the revelation of a name, the revelation of the word of God has come. Then now you can open your mouth and speak. You told your guy is you go to an issue. Once you have to buy, you have to look for a small house. Then when you know how to manage a small house, then you can move to a another big house. Where is it written? God told Abraham, and I will make you a father of many nations. He didn't say I will make you a village father, and then I will make you a, 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 a tribesman, and then. I'll, he said, you are a father. 
of many nations. You are a father of many nations. So I'm not waiting to see how many children you give birth to. It is not about how many. It is about he has spoken and he has said, you are blessed. And if he has spoken and he has said, I am blessed, it is my business to believe what he has said. I am blessed. The blessing you carry is as big as your mouth. If your mouth is small, <laughs> if your mouth is small, then you always struggle. If your mouth is big, then the Bible say, open your mouth wide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't say, mm. he said, what? Fungua yote. I got a sore throat a week ago. It was so bad, I'm thinking. How do I go and tell people faith? It depends on where your faith is. Praise the Lord. And I say, mm, go. We are not discussing. You are leaving. Praise the Lord. I'm doing some other things. Praise the Lord. And so therefore, as you open your mouth wide, God sends you. As you open your mouth wide, God fills your mouth. What language are you speaking when you open your mouth to speak? Amen. Some of us, somebody said, the servant of God said that some of us, some people have set in motion spiritual laws that cannot be reversed, destructive. They have said things and forgot about them. And you know, some of these things we say, they are not sins. So what are you Because who could you have? Now we say matu. Ah, we are squeezing mambo ni magumu. Okay, sawa. Si mambo ni magumu. Sasa Mungu atausaidiaje na wewe mwenyewe usha? It's like resigning from a job. You have been employed by company A and you write a resignation letter and you take the resignation letter it has been accepted. If the company is giving bonuses, you can't get a bonus. You resign. <laughs> you left the company. Now by your mouth you left the blessing. How about by your mouth you sign your name to the blessing? By your mouth you sign yourself to the blessing. When it starts to rain, I can assure you, you will not miss that rain. By your words, you shall be justified. By your words, you shall be condemned. That is what is written. Amen. Amen. Now how far will you go? Well, what are you supposed to speak? Now that is when the word comes in. We talked about the blood. We talked about the name. We talked about the mouth. Now we are talking about the word. The word can be a written word. It can be a spoken word. Anything that is not in agreement with that which is written may be or will be a liability to you. When Jesus went to the wilderness and he was being tempted in the wilderness, he told Satan, it is written. He didn't say, I am the son of God. I am the man of God. He said, it is written. He said, it is written. Somebody said, it is written. It is written. So that means, if you will walk in faith, you have to have a bank of what is written within you. By the spirit of the living God. You have to have a store of what is written. You don't have a strength to tell Satan anything. You don't have a strength to say it as it is written. Because you haven't read where it is written. Praise the Lord. And then somebody said, you know, when you start studying the Bible, you know, the devil attacks your mind and you start feeling sleepy. Has anybody ever had something like that? I tell you the truth. When you open that Bible, you will not read a chapter. You will sleep, a phone will ring, something will happen, you will not get anything. <laughs> because you resigned 
ulisema Biblia hiyo ni ya wale akina Pastor George na akina Moses na wale wengine huko juu sasa mimi you know so why Biblia ni ngumu haisomeki you have believed it is difficult to read it now how are we going to help you how is god going to help you what if you decided to believe it is possible to study the word it is possible to get this thing inside me it is possible even to memorize scripture it is possible to have it in my head it is possible what if you believe that and you started reading mike mudok when he was 20 years he used to read 40 chapters a day when that man when that man is talking you will leave what you are doing to listen to him. He read the time. I have Bishop Oyedo Poki for testimony and he said, in six months, the Bible is too old to be read. He buys a new one. Every six months there is a new Bible. He may soma back in Makaratasi na uminenda kibuka na upepo. He may soma in English. This is the big bishop up there. Ana soma ya, ana soma, ana soma. Masa wewe usomi ya, kuta saiti kaji. Amen. Ile Biblia uko nayo, Nilo likuwa na yo high school. <laughs> that was 15 years ago. And it's the same member of the street. <laughs> there are some pages which have not been read. Kifungwa zikinezi meshikana hivu. Amen. Commit to read that which is written. Commit to read that which is written. That when you start talking, you are talking from a place of it is written. 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 By his stripes I am here. Una dui mendi kwapi? Na ilikuwa imeandi kwa haje. Na ikaandikwa mali pengine haje. Na ikaandikwa mali pengine so in verse chapter 2 verse 3 and chapter 15 verse 2 and you know it is written. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are the driver in your life. If you don't drive it everybody is uh, running their own race. <laughs> I saw a, a something somebody had posted on Facebook today morning that you are worried about my sins. And in heaven you will not about be asked about my sins. <laughs> so it is at that place where it is everybody for himself. I will read this Bible because Pastor George doesn't know doesn't know me very well. He doesn't know where I'm coming from. He does not know the things I'm struggling with. And even if I've told him, I cannot have told him the full story. So he doesn't really, he feels me, but he doesn't, he doesn't really feel me. That story of Basme at 24, he doesn't know. And there are many other stories he doesn't know. Am, am, I, am I talking? Yes. Praise the Lord. There are many things about his life that we don't know. And we will never know. Even if he started to talk about them, we will never know everything. But you know what? He knows. You know what? You know. And so begin to fight because you are the one who knows where you are coming from. You are the ones who knows the things you are going through. Don't wait for someone to stop what they are doing to come and help you. Begin to fight. Amen. Begin to fight. Somebody say from today, I have faith. Hear the way you are talking. <laughs> From today I have faith. From this day I have faith. From this day I have faith. I am not a failure. I am not a failure. I am not defeated. I am more than a conqueror. I am healed. I am delivered. I am victorious. I am rich. I am, I am strong in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Can somebody see that garment? Yes. Can somebody see it now? Yes. Is somebody seeing it now? Now that word written or spoken is not complete. And this is where I will end. Until by the power from on high. He says, it's not by my, not by power, but by my spirit, says a lot of us. Now that spirit is a spirit of power. The power he was talking about is not by might, not by power, he's talking about military strength. 
But when he said, by the Spirit of God, he switched the dimensions. It is now the Spirit of power, the Spirit of glory, the Spirit of God. This temple, the hands that lay down the foundation of this temple, Zerubbabel, shall be the same as to bring it forth to perfection. By the Spirit, by the power of God. That is why when Jesus was checking out from the face of the earth, this is what he said. He said, turning ye in Jerusalem. Did he say that? Turn ye in Jerusalem. He didn't say that you may be endured with righteousness. He didn't say that. That you may be endured with goodness. That you may be endured with love. That you may be endured with this. He said that you may be endured with power from on high. It is that power that will enable you to open your mouth and speak things that are spiritual and those things that are spiritual become natural. It is that power. The man he was talking to had already rejected him. You look like you are one of them. He said, no, 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 no. I don't even know him. <laughs> it is those men he was saying, he didn't tell them repent. He told them, go and be a dude with power. <laughs> go and wait. When power arrived, the same man who had said, I don't know this man, stood and he said, these men are not drunk as you think they are. These men are not drunk. Something has happened. This is that which was prophesied. It has come to pass. By the end of the message, the same guy who was running away from a small girl led 3,000 people to Christ. The same people who were, I, they were not in the upper room praying in the city. They were afraid because the leader has died, the leader has resurrected, and the leader has disappeared. And they are being accused. <laughs> so they were like hiding in the other room. And power arrived. When power arrived, they were transformed. So that faith is not complete until power arrives. And once that power arrives, it is easier to say no to sin. When there is power in your heart. It is easier to walk away from a bride when you have power. If you don't have power, but when you have power, it is different. This is what I'm talking about. If you have power, you will say inside of your heart, <laughs> If you didn't have power, they will stop you. But now that you had power, something was quickened on the inside. And you spoke and you said, Amen. They are asking for something small, for something to happen. I was hearing, we had been given a testimony on, on Friday by Evangelist Warimo. She said that there was a time. Somebody was holding the permit for preaching in Uhuru Park. And she knelt before God and she said, God, I need to speak to that person. Give me the telephone number. And God will give her a telephone number. And she called that person. A permit is lying in your office. And I need that permit. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> just come. Just come collect your permit. So there's a dimension where even God can give you people number, people's numbers. You don't need to bribe this one so that you can get to her. God can give you a number. And you call her direct. And you get whatever favors that you needed, that you needed, or breakthrough that you needed. You know. Why? Because it is a realm of power. The Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Did he call us royal priesthood? So when you speak, we are speaking a language, but a language of power. Back to my heavens. When I say I am not poor, there is power on the inside that is pushing that word in the spiritual world, that is pushing that word in the natural world. When I say I am not a struggler, and I am not going to struggle, it will not happen. Why? I spoke in the spirit. I spoke in power. Praise the Lord. So when you speak in tongues, it is not, you know, for you to feel the fire of God. He didn't say, wait for the fire of God. 
He said, be endued with power. Then you shall be witnesses. Then you shall testify. Then you shall go forth and speak. Because power is on the inside. Peter said, silver and gold have I now. But such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing that language? Silver and gold have I none. The jacket is off. <laughs> Seen a jacket, but in the name of Jesus. He has hidden in the name. The blood is also talking. And then he gave what he had. Power. Rise up and walk. Not you will walk. You will he said, And the guy stood and he left. That is how close we are to the supernatural. And yet that is how far we are from the supernatural. We've heard from this pulpit. Jesus is coming. And you don't want to be left with clothes. What if you are somewhere? Masai Mara somewhere alone. Would you know if he has come? <laughs> Would you know he has come? But will you know he has come? Yeah. Yeah. Will you know he has come? Yeah. We need to get to that dimension where we can feel the spirit of the living God. Amen. We can walk in the spirit of the living God. Before heaven moves, we know heaven is moving. See, we have our news in the way now. Praise the Lord. The naked prophet. Amen. So as we walk, the jacket is off. And another supernatural jacket is on. Then I will prophesy. Then I will pray prayers that will make a difference. Dangerous prayers are not a reserve of a particular people. But while the Nigerians, you know, Nigerians when Nigerians pray, you know, in Jesus' precious name, in Nigeria, like a woman who is Zuri, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? It is a language for every Christian. Those powerful prayers, they are not for certain people. They are for every Christian. He said. Touch not my anointed one and do my prophets no harm. He was not talking about Moses and Joshua. He was talking about the children of Israel. Both those who are 90 years old and those who are born yesterday. All of them, God called them prophets. And He said, If you touch one, you know, Muse, Kuhani, Nauguse, who you have, water, they are covered by the same blood. They are sanctified by the same sanctification. They are delivered, they are mine. I bought them. I paid the price for them. I have delivered them. You have no right to point the finger. Usi yon ni kadogo uza meaka sasa ni kandugu kengine. Hakuna kandugu kengine. Ama kadada. Kale kadada. Praise the Lord. And so I'd like us to stand on our feet. Now that we have seen which jacket is which one. Amen. Now that we have seen which jacket is which one. Now that we have seen which court is which one? If there are situations where you set in, in motion laws that have been working against you, it is about time that you begin to speak. Amen? Amen. And reverse those words. Amen? And begin saying, begin prophesying, begin talking about your life, begin talking about your tomorrow, begin talking about your destiny. Amen? Robert, begin talking about your destiny. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God. We bless your name, Jehovah. We bless your name, Jesus. We exalt your name, Jehovah. We magnify your name, O God. Talalamo seta yala mando rabonta. Rika ya tora bakule rikata ita rabosai. Mara kana bosita toro bosekita. Rabos kita tita roba zekaita robare kalia tora. We receive the blood. We receive the blood. We receive the ministry of the blood of Jesus Christ. We receive the ministry of the blood of Jesus Christ. We receive the ministry of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We receive the ministry of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We receive the ministry of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We receive the ministry.
of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Receive the ministry in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody receive the ministry of the blood of Jesus. Somebody receive the ministry of the precious blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. Speak a better thing than the blood of God. It is the blood that speak of deliverance. It is the blood that speak for us. It is the blood. Even as we rise this afternoon, Jehovah, we stand by the blood. We stand by the blood. We stand by the blood. It is not because of our deeds. It is not because of our actions. But the blood of Jesus Christ having been accepted in the heaven land. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ have been, have been accepted in the heaven land, oh God. Jehovah, this we thank you. We bless your name. Jesus, listen to this. 